Wow. There you was go. that cool or was that cool? I didn't get to hear all the music because we had it on mute because we didn't want to read. Uh, yeah, we didn't. We didn't. We didn't want the uh, reverb coming through. Actually, it won't do that. Oh, it won't. Uh, I could have. I could have played it, but I wanted to. Uh, it doesn't play normally unless you're on the uh, the actual page. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and open it up here right. while I am. Uh, so, uh, welcome everybody to Tales from the Lounge Tales Cigar from the Company lounge. Sp Spotlight. Nice. And uh, wow, we've got a lot of changes going on today. Yeah, we do. And as such, uh, I decided we needed to celebrate a little bit. We got new T-shirts. In fact, we're going to give a T-shirt away tonight, so uh, stay tuned and be ready uh, because uh, we're going to give away uh, a Tales from the Lounge T-shirt as long as you're not a triple extra large. <laughs> if you're a triple extra large, I just got no hope for you. Uh, but uh, we busted out the uh, uh, Dalmore Cigar Malt tonight. Yes, we did. Uh, we'll try not to drink it all tonight, but... I'm not going to promise anything. We got some. We got some exciting things going on tonight. So. Exactly, and as you noticed, we now have a countdown. We now have a better video set up, and I'm hoping that everything is working as expected. Y'all, let us know how we're coming through, video and audio wise. Whether you're uh, having any issues. Uh, yeah. Mm. And tonight we're going to cover Crux. We're going to try to cover Crux. Uh, a lot of stuff has changed uh, with them, and I couldn't find any of my old notes for some reason. Uh, well, and, and you know, there's a couple of things that have changed since the last time we did it. Yep. And yep. now, you know, we've got all this new video equipment and cool stuff that we can do. We've got our banner up. We've got our shirts. In fact, Sam, uh, one of their main reps, was going to be in tonight. But unfortunately, uh, last minute, he had to cancel. Wasn't feeling well, feeling a little feverish, a little nauseous, and didn't want to potentially... We'll, we'll harass him later. Yeah. Didn't want to potentially uh, get us sick, so decided uh, I'm to I'm not take worried a... about getting sick. What I'm worried I, I about is either. him getting drunk and throwing up because he's sick. Uh, so uh, he was going to be our special guest tonight. We were kind of leaning on, oh, great. We don't really have to do any extra research because Sam will be here to talk about it. That's everything. right. He'll tell us everything we wanted to know. <laughs> uh, so, but, you know, hey, things happen. I do have my original card notes. They're a little yellow because it's been over a year since we covered trucks. But we'll go through that. And we got some interesting other things. It has been things. quite a while since we've done, and done. I haven't been, you know, as uh, Larry Adams pointed out, it's been at least three weeks, a month since I've been oh, on the show. Oh, God. Just because... Sick one time, Friendsgiving, uh, Bourbon Society, and then uh, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. So, I know. It's crazy. Crazy. Uh, it's great to see everybody tonight. I'm really excited. Uh, uh, not only to have Chris back. back don't get me wrong. Uh, the, the new video and the t-shirts and stuff are all cool. But I'm glad to have my buddy back because... You're just hard to beat, man. You know, we get we get things done around here, you know? We do. I mean, you know, unlike some shows that don't show up that don't start rolling on time, we're pretty <laughs> darn consistent. Well, and look at that. Rick says that uh, Anna is bringing back some Chinese made cigars for us to try. Oh my god. Rick, dude, you got to hurry up and come down here, man. Uh, got to come down here and visit and hang out with us for a while. Yeah. Uh, so let's uh, before we just jump into crux. How was everybody's Thanksgiving? Let us know uh, in the chat here. Like, share out to your friends, and that's going to be the contest. Whoever shares out the most tonight and likes the most is going to win a T-shirt. And Woo I already shared out to like fifty people. So oh, I don't count. I don't count, and I don't count either. And that, right. you know that kind of sucks. But Chris Coulter, Chris Coulter. What's up, Chris? All right, so, yes, I uh, hope everyone had a good Thanksgiving. I got to spend it um, in Houston with my sister and parents. Uh, family got to do that. And, and then he was rubbing elbows. Well, and then, yes, I did uh, get to rub elbows with uh, Doug Bocock of Bocock Cigars, uh, who's in the Houston area. Oh. 
He invited me to go to the LSU A&M game down in Baton Rouge. I hadn't been to Baton Rouge in over 20 years. Uh, he went to school there, knew a whole bunch of people down there. We went to a tailgate, went to the game, went to the after party, went to the after party, after party, and then the private after party, after party. Um, needless to say, what happens in Baton Rouge on game night stays in Baton Rouge on game night. Um, very much like uh, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. So not That's, much details I can give to you. Um, I do have a at couple. At least of as far as he knows. Now, when the, sur <laughs> when, when the uh, photos surface <laughs> later on, he's going to be going, oh, my God. I do have some battle scars uh, from the weekend, but, um, I, but, I'm, but I'm good. But, but she was cute. So, you know, I mean, yeah. I, you know, um, <laughs> and uh, I did uh, uh, get to not only, so I was where, there with Doug and his uh, brother-in-law. Now, uh, Bryant, his, his brother, who owns a scar company with him, actually uh, was uh, in Hon Honduras. No, not in Honduras. Uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to say where. He, he's oh, down okay. there somewhere. Okay. Because he's finishing up a special blend on a new cigar that they're getting ready to release uh, this next year. Um, and even that I'm probably not supposed to talk about, so I'm not going to okay, say okay. much else. Except for uh, the Bocock Brothers do have a collaboration with It's Going to Be Amazing. It's going to be an amazing cigar, and Bryant's been finishing up the details on it. So be looking for that after the first of the year. And Doug said uh, you know, one time he's going to try and come up here uh, and do the show with us. So. Yeah, I can't wait. I can't wait. Uh, how you doing, Rhonda? I'm glad you showed up. I'm glad you're back in town safely. Uh, and uh, Chris, you know, he's uh, saying the shirts look great, but the models, well, you know. Yeah, well, you know, that that's we're, that happens. We're we're here for our good looks, you know. And hey, this is an extra large. Uh, a year and a half ago, this would have to be a triple or four XL. So this is a. You know, I, that's fine. I, you can call me ugly all you want. Um, I'm in an extra large T-shirt at this point. So, um, all right. So that's that was my. Uh, and then, you know, the plan was to get up early Sunday morning, drive back to Houston, then me jump in my car from my sister's house and drive back and get back here on Sunday. I had taken Monday off and then just had all day Monday to recover. Yeah. Well, to let you know how that plan went, we didn't get back into Houston until like 6 o'clock at night. So obviously we didn't get up early Sunday morning uh, for whatever reason. Yes, I think it's called Baton Rouge Amnesia um, or something like that. Uh, and then at that point I was I had a little bit of leftovers um, and I went straight to bed and slept for like 8 or 9 hours and then woke up in the middle of the night around 4 a.m. and went ahead and drove back so I missed the Houston traffic on Monday morning and then was just a blob on on Monday. I had the day off. I didn't do anything. I just unpacked and washed clothes and laid around and watched TV. So, but there you go. I had a good, I had a good, good Thanksgiving. It's it was the it was the it was the experience of smoking cigars uh, there uh, at LSU and great fans, very friendly. Not like it was 20 years ago when I was there, throwing bottles and rocks and all kinds of crazy stuff at you. Of course. We did let them get away with the win in the last minute of the game, so they were pretty uh, happy. So, but there you go. That was my Thanksgiving. Well, I had I have made all the family from Tyler come up here to uh, uh, McKinney to have Thanksgiving, and I figured if they didn't want to come, then I didn't want to go down there and see them either. So, <laughs> I had, we had about twelve people, thirteen people. Well, we had twelve people, and then some moron invited my oldest daughter's boyfriend over. And uh, I did a great job ignoring his dumb ass all afternoon. <laughs> uh, but my brother-in-law, who's uh, 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 mentally handicapped, but he does love to watch the Saturday at the Shop shows, and he loves to catch oh. us every once in a while. And uh, for the first time, uh, he smoked a cigar. I gave him a uh, Kermit the Frog. And he really enjoyed it. He had such a great time. I was glad to see him have fun. Which is actually... The uh, uh, definition cigars DC calls the what we call Kermit the Frog. Right, agent is, number five. Agent number five, or is it agent seven? No, it's agent, not, five. agent number five. Yep. Yeah. So, anyway, just so if you're out there looking for it, only place you'd find it called Kermit the Frog is at 
at industrial, at industrial cigar. Yeah. Because the green band looks like Kermit the Frog right. color. And that and that's if you type in Kermit in the POS system, that's how it comes up. Is it really? Yeah, that's, it is. That's yeah. funny. That yeah. is funny. Um, it's an easy way to identify it. Uh, so he, he smoked a cigar for the first time. That's a good one to uh, start him out with. So, and you say he likes to catch our show. So I told you that Doug's brother-in-law um, wa- went with us to Baton right. Rouge. They, they drove by Saturday morning, picked me up at 6 o'clock in the morning at the house. And when we get in the car, Lewis is his name, he was like, man, have we met before? I was like, I'm pretty sure we haven't. He's like, your face just looks really familiar. And then Doug started, we started talking about cigars, and he goes, wait a minute. He goes, do you and somebody else do like a, uh, a podcast <laughs> during the week? I was like, yeah. He goes, I've seen it. And he goes, and then, and then we started, I said, oh, and then I also sometimes am on Saturday at the show. He goes, oh, okay, yeah. He goes, I watch both those shows. Oh, man. So, yeah. We need to send him a T-shirt. A little <laughs> bit of, uh, a little bit of uh, celebrity fanfare going on there. Oh. Granted, all of our, you know, 10 or 15. Uh, we, were, we were up to eight viewers a little while ago. I mean, you know, yeah. we're, we're, we're just rocking it over here. <laughs> so, yeah. So, that was kind of cool. I was like, oh, yeah. Oh. So, um, but, yeah. So, that, that, was, that was a lot of fun. Well, I hope everybody enjoyed their holiday and uh, got to uh, see relatives and uh, and avoided the whole COVID nonsense. And uh, uh, hopefully, things will uh, be better for Christmas. Uh, so the the one thing I will talk about, as far as being banged up, I did get in an accident over the oh, holidays. Oh, that's right. I'm still dealing with that. Um, pulled into a parking lot pulled down the lane to go park some people walked out in between some cars so i had to stop obviously as they were crossing and the lady well you you stopped i might not have (laughs) well i stopped the lady that that decided it was time to back up didn't double check to make sure that i had cleared her and just backed right up into my passenger side uh, door uh and rammed it pretty good it still opens and closes obviously the window won't go up or down it only Uh, killed 32 and injured 55 But um, everybody's going to be okay. But, yeah, she was a nice uh, nice older lady um, and was just, you know, so apologetic. Uh, but I'm still dealing with the insurance company, her insurance company, to get it fixed and stuff like that. So that was the only, I was the only other uh, minor injury that happened. But both of us, you know, walked away safe. Neither one of us had to go to the hospital for injuries or anything. Um, awesome, and we awesome. we were all good, so, yeah. So... We're sitting here smoking truck cigars. What are you smoking? I am smoking the Dew Connoisseur. Now, the last time we covered Crux, we didn't have the Dew Connoisseur because when they originally came out with it, they had it for a while, and then it kind of went into hibernation. Um, They were having a hard time getting the right tobacco uh, for the blend for it. Uh, And then, and it was also one of the ones, one of the last ones for Brandon to help them do the rebranding. Right. On. So that, that's why they kind of held out on it for a while. Uh, so this one, the Dew kind of sewer, and I do have my notes, so I can tell you a little bit about it. Uh, there we go. Well, don't give too so, much away. So the Dew kind of sewer actually originally came out in 2015, gold and white uh, band or label, um, kind of medium strength. The filler is Honduran. The binder is Nicaraguan, and the wrapper is uh, Nicaraguan Habano uh, from Jalapa Valley. Uh, so, and it's a great cigar. It's one of the cigars that I notice if if I'm walking around the lounge, yep, and I'm carrying stuff or cleaning out ashtrays. It is one that if I keep in my mouth for a while, it causes me to salivate a lot. I'm like a old Pass Saint Bernard. Hand. Saint Bernard with just drool coming out of my mouth. So, uh, but it's very flavorful. Um, some cedar, some caramel, coffee, earthy notes, a little bit of red pepper. I would say, you know, that's the notes that I have on here. And when we when we did this, we hadn't had a chance to smoke it. I don't know, right? At least right now, I'm not picking up the red pepper. I definitely get the cedar and the caramel coffee and the earthiness, but I haven't picked up, and I don't remember picking up. And we've had a few of those now because they brought them back out, what, a couple of months ago, three months ago? Oh, yeah, probably even six months ago. Six months ago. Now, this is the Lancero. There's a Lancero number one and number two. Now, 
I'll give you guys. Here's a new segment that we're doing. Hot tip of the day. Okay. Right. Okay. If you think your cigar looks a little dirty, that's okay. Just cut it and smoke it. Do not, do not put it through the washing machine because that's what it's going to look like. And it's not going to be, uh, I don't think that's smokable. It still looks pretty wet. I don't know if that would even light. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, oh man, Sam gave me this last night and I was going to bring it tonight to smoke it on the show. So this is the non-Lancero version of the Dew Connoisseur. I was all excited. I, I would have sworn I checked all my pockets when I threw everything in the washing machine. But when I went to take stuff out of the washing machine and put it in the dryer, this bad boy fell out, and I was just heartbroken. So, yeah, do not try to wash your cigars in the washing machine. Um, not a good idea. Now, I haven't put one through the washer, but I did find one in a jacket pocket that I probably hadn't worn in a year. And you it, can revive it. You can. Uh, yeah, you can revive it. Uh, but it made me really feel bad because it was an Atabay. Ugh. And I was like, oh, God, man, I sure hope I can salvage this thing. But, yeah, I put the jacket on. I was going through my pockets. I'm like, what the hell? I'm like, oh, shit. And so I'm like, God, I hope I can. Do it. So it went back into the humidor and sat, and it's still sitting. I, I'll, I'll probably save that one. That may be the last Atabay I ever smoke. <laughs> this, uh, and, and because I washed it, the uh, cellophane is now nice and brown, so you'd think it's even, like, super-aged at well, this even point. Well, uh, even the... Uh, even uh, the white... The white, the, the white label... Uh, is very aged. Is very aged. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe in a couple of weeks, when this thing is dried out, I'll uh, try and see if we can smoke it and see how bad it is. Oh, uh, that might make you sick. Yeah, I don't know what kind of... It might still have detergent in it. No, nah, probably doesn't because it was... I don't know. Uh, anyway. Yeah. Anyway, so so the Duke kind of sewer is something new that we didn't have and hadn't smoked uh, the last time we did this. Now, one of the things that we also have, and I brought my box with me, we've had these cigars, but we dressed them up a little bit. We did. Well, Crux did for us. Crux did. Uh, so you want to talk a little bit about uh, what this is, what this is about, and what it was for, and yeah. how all this came about? Because you, you helped give out the uh, yep. comic books, right? Yep. So for the Halloween uh, this year, it was superheroes and comic book characters for the Halloween party at Industrial, and as a special release, Crux said that they had a cigar that mm. they wanted to show them the front first. Uh, I will, but I'm just trying I mean, I'll to get take it. it I, I know how to get uh, it. Yeah. Get okay. It so anyway. But they were they were talking about doing comic books, and I said, "Dude, I've got a bunch of comic books," and Chris can attest, I've got a bunch of comic books. So I gave them a bunch of comic books, and what they did was they put a part of a cover on the front of the box, and then they took pages and cut the pages out to make the to go with the bands uh, for the cigars, and then they even put. And then they even put another part of a cover on, inside. on the inside. So now this one at the front is Iron Man, which I got this box specifically because I went to the Halloween party as, as Tony Stark. Tony Stark, right? Um, and then you, so you've got a little bit of an advertisement. And then each one of these cigars, you can see I've already smoked one. But each of these cigars, in addition to their regular band, I'm going to push this out a little bit yeah. more to get that out, has... There's actually a little comic. Once you take this band off, it's a little uh, window strip. comic, strip comic uh, from uh, one of the comic books. Uh, and you can even see, I mean, this one even has, uh, I don't need the powers. If anything, we're talking about simplifying the payload. So there's all kinds of just uh, cool stuff uh, in here. These are really cool. Uh, Which makes every cigar unique. Yes. Because I didn't give them any duplicate comic books, so anything they cut out and, and used was unique. Uh, and so every cigar has a little different uh, uh, deal on it. It's also got a little uh, different page, out of an advertisement in the uh, uh, on the inside. And uh, I've smoked a couple of those, and those are really good. Yeah. Those are uh, Limitadas, uh, it's the from, Gunners. Yeah, the Gunners from 2019. So yep. they just took an... So they, it's not a different blend or anything. It's one of the ones I already had, but they did put a special band on it and a special label on on the front of the box. And it's what I think they only made 
two or three hundred boxes. Yeah, something like that. So it was a very small number. That's that's you know that's a limited edition. You don't have that. Sorry, you're not going to get it. Um, and no one has this. You could probably put it in the washing machine and do the same thing. But anyway, um, but yeah. So that is something new that they did. Uh, little project. Uh, Crux is uh, near and dear uh, to ICC's heart. One of the first uh, cigar brands that I think that they brought in. You know, we've talked about brand and uh, helping them with their uh, rebranding. Uh, so uh, they're always uh, wanting to jump in and help with that. In fact, Casey was Casey Hogan, one of the owners, was there. Yep. Sam was there, and they talked about the fact that, oh yeah, we've we've perpetually signed up to always be the Halloween cigar sponsor. Sponsor, yep. So, so you know, anytime that, you show up to a, a Halloween party at Industrial, there will be Crux cigars there. I know that it'll probably be something limited or a special edition that you can only get at the Halloween party. Yep. So there you go. So let's talk about Crux and how it got started. All right. So we got Casey Hogan. Yes. And who else we got? We've got uh, Jeff Hogan. Jeff Hogan. Uh, Sam's actually, their sales rep slash. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, executive sales rep. Now, when we did this show the first time, he was over Texas, Oklahoma, Louisiana, and Arkansas. Right. However, just recently, in the past month, so newsflash, hot news, he's also taken over New Mexico. Uh, so there you go. There's a little bit of uh, information that you won't even find out up there on the web right now. I found that out last night talking to him in the lounge. Um, so it was actually, I think it was Joel Rogers. I got this note here. Joel Rogers, Jeff Hogan, a little arrow. Tobacco Grove, Maple Grove, uh, Minnesota. Uh, but now I think they're, that's where that started. But yeah. now, uh, back there in Boca Raton, Raton Florida, Florida. Um, 2014. Uh, in 2019. So they got started in 2014 mm -hmm. and they started kind of started planning stuff and getting things started and got the uh, brand going. And they started out with a couple of just. Uh, what do you want to call it? What do you want to call the, the Nymphas, the Nymphomaniac, the Skeeters, the Sports, the Passport? It was kind of just a bunch of fun little small... Uh, small run. Small run uh, names. Very boutique. Um, very boutique. Very boutique, right? The, the Nympha or the Nymphomaniac can't get enough. Uh, it was an homage to Cuba. So a classic Cuban uh, nympha vitola um, and uh, had a, a viso filler from Esteli, an Indonesian binder. That's what was what made it very unique. And then yep. the wrapper was a, a Havana Jalapa. Uh, nuts, apricots, cocoa cream, and fresh, fresh brownies is kind of the flavor profile on that. Um, Medium to full uh, was what that was. And then there was a, a Nympha Dark, uh, which was more brown than caramel color. And it had more of a dark chocolate and cherry, walnuts and roasted pecans. Again, same uh, filler and binder. The difference was the wrapper was sun-grown Jalapa Valley. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, and then the Skeeter, which uh, was... Advertised as just a little prick. Um, <laughs> was a medium to full liquor. I've been described by that a few times. Yeah, yeah. It's a little Purito, a little 4x32. It's a little small, tiny thing. Um, licorice, cocoa, hay, a little light black pepper, some sweet spice and leather. Now, it had a Nicaraguan Habano filler, Indonesian binder again, and then a Nicaragua Habano wrapper. Um and so those were the ones. Oh, and then the passport. Passport, yeah. The one-hour vacation, the no visa required is what uh, they had it branded as. Uh, and what made that one uh, a little bit different, cocoa spice. It had some uh, cut herbs uh, flavor to it, leather, a little bit why of do they, Why do they keep picking on herb? Yeah, I don't know. A little bit of saltiness. Uh, and then Nicaraguan filler, Nicaraguan binder, but an Ecuadorian Habano wrapper. Um, and it came in like four or five different sizes as well, but it was, it was deemed a one hour vacation. No, no visa required. And you know, and they're one of the, uh, premier companies that does 
a lot of symbolism and a lot of fun and do, do a lot of things with their uh, yeah. branding. And, you know, the, they, they have little catchphrases for almost everything that they do. And they just make it fun, you know, and that's the that's part of the uh, the charm of the company itself. Yeah. Not to mention the Hogan's are just super nice people. Yeah. I mean, and, and we talk about the rebranding. I'm glad I'm, you, I know you've got a couple of the old ones, but if you look at this Limitada box. Yep. Right here where it says Crux right there you can see that that was the old brand it was kind of a medieval knight type uh writing and on the box it might be easy to read but on a cigar band it was kind of hard to read yeah it was uh, it and was that's what kind of led them to do the rebranding and you can see even on the do kind of sewers the crux rebrand very easy to read very clean uh and brandon helped them with that in 2019 um and we talk about we talk about symbolism, so I'm going to go with the bull and bear first. Well, let's let's finish oh. the history first, and then okay. we'll hit into the uh, uh, the products because I've got a whole other right. deal we can do. All right. So, what more about the history do you want to know? So that was where they started. Then they came with the bull and bear in late 2014, early 2015. In 15, they had a guild. So so how did they get into cigars? I don't have that on my my notes. Damn it, Sam. Yeah, I know. Well, one of the things that they do that I do have is that um, kind of their tagline is celebrating life successes, failures, and moments of reflection. Um, and an important part about uh, their cigars is when they originally got started. And we've talked about this in a couple of the company profiles that we've done. Um, they partnered with the Placencia factory. And we right? love Placencia factory. We love Placencia and the Placencia family. Um, and there are a lot of cigars that have gone through that family. Um, and uh, you know, kind of grown up with that family or done some time there to learn about cigars. You know, we... One of the things that we, I think we mention a lot is it's a large industry, but it's a very small. Group, tight knit group. Tight knit yep. group, right? Yep. Um, and, uh, you know, that's one of the families that's more than willing to, you know, if you have the same passion about cigars that they do, they're willing, as long as you're willing to teach and learn, they're willing to teach you as much as you can soak up and learn. So, uh, very, uh, Placencia is a, a great Great company, and that's uh, that's kind of where they came up through is uh, partnering with them. Uh, located out of Esteli, Nicaragua. Yep. So, so do you want to uh, do you want to jump into the product now? All right, all right, all right, all right. All right. Sure. So, who do you want to do first? Uh, I want to talk about the Bull and Bear. All right, good, because that's who I pulled up. And we'll see if they can see this logo. It might be a little bit. They don't hard. need to. No, they don't. Oh, because you already have put it up. There. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with our new uh, camera tricks and all our expensive uh, studio photography now, we have gone pretty professional. So that's the bull and bear. And we talk about the symbolism. And so you can see it's kind of a yin and yang in a circle, the bull and the bear. Um, and it's very reflective of, of the flavor because the flavor has this uh, dark earthiness, a little bit of black pepper, but it also has some sweetness. So it's savory and sweet, right? So very balanced in that way. Uh, both Nicaraguan binder and filler and a Habano Jalapa wrapper. Um, and the notes on And this, I almost smoked this one tonight. Yeah, I, that's I, an excellent cigar. This is an excellent cigar. One of my one of my favorites. And the price point on the bull and bear is just phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, I mean they're This is what, the double corona, isn't it? Yeah. I love the double corona. And and that's that's one one thing about the bull and bear, and a box Rick, of those is like 180 bucks. I'm like, come on, dude. And Rick, this is for you. Um, this cigar, most cigars, you don't want to smoke outside because the wind's going to smoke a lot of it. But this cigar holds up very well outside, and because a lot of the the part of enjoyment of smoking a cigar uh, is also the smell of it, right? You yep. don't realize how much your olfactory is that right? Yep. Uh, senses uh, play into smoking a cigar and the enjoyment of it. But this cigar holds up well outside, and the ICC uh, members who go play golf Sunday mornings, a lot of them will go grab a handful of these 
and smoke these when they're on the golf course because it just stands up really well outside and you're not going to lose a lot of the flavor of it. Give ah. me a bottle there. All right. So that's the... That's the bull and bear, and I can talk about the symbolism of the next one. That well, let's choose. talk about the symbolism on this one, because the the bull and bear that was a tribute to old school Wall Street, and you'll notice that beautiful blue, uh, and you'll notice on the uh, cigar itself, you'll see that herringbone pattern. Yes. Uh, and that is a throwback to the old herringbone suit patterns that right. Wall Street guys used to wear. And they did that specifically as a homage to yes, the uh, those Wall Street tycoons who uh, traded stocks and traded commodities and smoked cigars. Yeah. Now, the interesting thing about this is when this cigar was first released, and still probably so, but... Uh, was rated a 93 out of 100 by Stogie Press. Uh, and they talked about uh, they got some vanilla, honey, walnut uh, flavors out of it. Ah, oh, there's Cy Sweeney. Uh, greetings. Where are you coming in from, Cy? Looks like he's got a shamrock, so I'm thinking uh, maybe Ireland. Um, what's the time difference there? Gosh, it's got to be late there or early in the morning. Could be, could be. Anyway, um... Thanks for joining us. So, uh, yeah, so 90, and the Bull and Bear is probably one of my favorite cigars in in the line. Um, I love the Duke Connoisseur as well, but for an everyday smoke, probably the Bull and Bear. Um, I, I smoke all of these, though. Uh, yeah. Every week. Uh, Ireland, yeah. I was. And, and well, welcome from Ireland, my brother. And uh, the, uh, whoops, the, uh, the, one of the things I love about, dude, what are you doing up so late? <laughs> don't, don't answer. <laughs> but, uh, and I hope she's cute. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> uh, Crux is one of those lines that do not put out a bad cigar, and there's nothing in their line that I'm that that I don't like. You know. Th there's a lot of cigar companies out there. You'll find stuff that you like, and then there's stuff that you don't care much for. But Crux is one of those uh, lines that everything they produce is quality. Everything is good. And I want you to look at this. Look at his. Look at mine. Look at the burn line on these cigars. I mean. Mine got a little uneven, but only because I had it sitting here on this ash over there. But, but you know, I mean, they're, they're a solid burn. The quality's there. The taste is there. And that's what you can expect out of a crux. And that's, you know, one of the things that I love about, you know, the, the show is we get to feature these these companies and, you know, let people know what's really cool out there. Uh, so this is uh, what do you want to go to next? Uh, what, what are you whatever you pull up? I'll talk about. All right. Well, let me pull up the next one then. Y'all bear with me because I'm right. still getting. Uh, yeah, we're still learning our new studio equipment, our new fancy. Let's do the Duke Connoisseur. The Duke Connoisseur. All right, excellent. So uh, now that that Duke Connoisseur, I think that's the, what the label is on the box. Um, but you can see that's what that's what I'm smoking, and that's and uh, that is an old band label on yeah. that Duke Connoisseur. Uh, this is the new label. This is the rebranded uh, label that uh, Brandon did. Uh, very elegant cigar. Um, I think I talked about it just a while ago. Uh, lots of cedar, caramel coffee, a little bit of coffee, some good earthiness to this. I have not run into the red pepper. Now, again, I am on the uh, Lancero. I think in this... Uh, what would have been? What would have been this... What is it, a Robusto? Know, Robusto or... I, I, I can't even read the label. Or Toro. Toro or whatever. Uh, I think that one's the one that has a little bit of red pepper. I don't get a lot of red... I don't get any red pepper in this one, uh, but it's still an excellent cigar. Uh, that's a very smooth cigar. I am pizza cigar nation in the house. All right. Pizza cigars. Uh, all right. So that's good. I, I'm, I'm good with that. Awesome. Mike Fife. Welcome, Mike. Um, so, but yeah, the Duke Connoisseur uh, is... Now, its price point is a little bit more than most of the Crux brand, but I also believe that... They've got some extra aging on them. They've got some extra aging, and the tobacco leaves that they have in here 
um, are a little bit harder to come by. Yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, very well, uh, uh, I guess, deserving of that. So, But if you have not had the Duke Connoisseur, it's definitely worth a try. Um, and I think, I th well, everything in the crux, again, like, uh, like Chris Coulter said, he smoked everything, solid construction, always enjoyable. Bull and Bear is his favorite. It just depends on what kind of mood I'm in. Do I want something a little bit lighter and woodsy, or do I want something a little bit darker or fuller flavor? Because the Bull and Bear and even the uh, Epicure, Epicure Maduro, yeah. it might be fuller and a little bit darker, but it's not something you're going to wrestle with. It's got a very good depth in the flavor. Exactly. Uh, so there's Norman. Hey, Norman. Welcome, Norman. Good How's to see you, going? brother. All right, so that's the Duke Connoisseur. Um and for those of you that are new and some of these new names that I'm seeing on here, um, we're uh, just doing a company spotlight. We're not really, we don't do cigar uh, Yeah, we do ratings. not do cigar reviews. We'll tell you what we, what we like about the cigars, but really it's talking about the history of the company, how they came about, and a little bit of the sim, uh, symbolism behind uh, what they what they chose and some of the things and the, on and the history cigar. of how they got started and and who owns them and, and their history. All right, so the Epicure. So now we're down to the Epicure. So that is man, I love the I fact love that, that you can do the uh, the graphics on there. I am so, too because so this is the Winged Horse and let me see if I can find the Epicure in here. Uh, oh, so this was a tribute to the Nicaraguan uh, artisans. Uh, and the fact that they do art. This was a cigar that uh, was four years in the making. It's kind of the, they labeled it as the Steve McQueen of cigars. Very, very classic, very smooth, very clean. Very classy. Yeah, uh, cigar. Now, here is a very interesting uh, uh, point on this one. Stogie Press. In 2017, rated this 97 out of 100. Holy crap. Yeah, 97 out of 100. Uh, Cigar Coupe, uh, 94 out of 100. And in Half Wheel 2019, uh, it finished in the top 15. It was number 15 out of 514 cigars that they rated. So that lets you know, again, we're not... Might be our opinion that we really like these, and this is a great cigar. But a lot of other people uh, think the same thing. Now, this is a light to medium uh, strength or bodied cigar. It is uh, the flavor profile on it, uh, creamy, a little bit of nuttiness, a little bit of hint of light pepper, caramel, and just a hint of citrus in there every now and then. Uh, the wrapper uh, is a uh, Ecuadorian Connecticut shade wrapper. Ecuadorian Connecticut shade. And for those of you who don't know, that means they actually shade with cheesecloth the plants so they don't get direct sunlight. Uh, they still get the a lot of the UV rays, but they do not get that direct sunlight as as bad as sun growth. Yeah. Um, so uh, let's see. Uh, oh, Coulter said that uh, the bull and bear is great with a good peaty scotch. Oh, and I like the Oban. That's yeah. that's a good good one. And uh, uh, he, he also said that besides talking about cigars and cigar companies in our history, we, we also do a good bit of drinking here, especially with hey, D listen, especially I've got, with DCs in the house. Uh, listen, I was going to say, and uh, oh God, yeah, and we've got the Dalmore Cigar Malt here tonight, and I'll tell you what, I'm going to have to refrain myself from uh, uh -huh. drinking way too much of that. All right, so that is the Epicure. The Steve McQueen of theirs, and again, that was a tribute to the uh, Nicaraguan artisans. And you can see the, uh, if you look at the label there, it has the kind of a diamond-shaped pattern and everything. Again, very clean, very smooth, very elegant, classy uh, uh, label there. All right, so which one are we going to go to next? We are going to go to the Guild next. Ah, right, the Guild. All right. The Cross Swords. The Cross Swords. So, and I have smoked a lot of those, by the way. I like the Guild. The Guild is a great one. So the Guild, you can see the Cross Swords there. Um, actually, I believe, if I remember correctly, um, I don't want to get this wrong, but 
It was. Oh, don't worry. Nobody will call you out on it. We don't have that many viewers. It was. Yeah. It was very. <laughs> this was very close to another, and I'm not going to mention who it was. Another cigar manufacturer's uh, label, and so they had to change this this up to what it is now. Um, uh, anyway, uh, there was a lawsuit and. Cease there was a cease and desist yeah, yeah, letters, yeah, yeah. and we are experts on cease yes, and desist letters. Yeah, so yeah, um, but this cigar is an homage to the craftsmanship and history of cigars as a handmade product. Exactly, um, and that's what the the guild or the cross swords that craftsmanship uh, and detail that goes into it, allowing each person to be united by the leaf. Right. That's what I mean. That's how. That's how. That's why we're all here, that's right? We're exactly. all united by by this little brown stick right here, um, and our love for it. Now, this one also uh, was rated by Cigar Coop as a 93 out of 100. So again, uh, you know, all these cigars are uh, pretty highly rated, uh, and you know, what ten dollars? Oh a yeah, stick? I mean, yeah. these are great price points. Binder and filler Nicaraguan Ecuadorian Habano uh, wrapper. Um, earthy, woody, and nuttiness is on the uh, flavor, uh, described as just very savory and clean. And I would say on all the crux, um, does not leave uh, a heavy film or uh, residue on your palate when you're done smoking it. It's very nice and clean um, uh, and really good. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I have to agree with you, Rick. Uh, leafy vegetables, cigars or salad. You know, this is yeah. this is this is my uh, vegetables uh, intake for the week. So uh, I keep talking. And my my cigar keeps going out. Um, yeah. So that's the Guild. That one was released in 2015. The first released. Um, all right. So which one are we going to move? We're going to gonna, we're going to go from the Guild to what I'm smoking with, it, which is the Epicure Maduro. Epicure Maduro. And I'll tell you what, I will smoke these. I'll, I will smoke a whole lot of these, too. Uh, that's a medium to full uh, 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 cigar. The It's got cocoa, molasses, and cedar. Uh, as you can tell, and again, this is uh, uh, the homage to the artisan of the, uh, the stick. And again, it's got the diamond. The difference is it's got a Maduro wrapper on it. It is a San Andreas Maduro wrapper. And we love our San Andreas Maduro wrappers. So, yeah, if you've been on here before, that's what you would uh, you hear us talk about that. In fact, in fact, I can't wait to have Edgar back on with, with this new setup. Right. This is going to be awesome. So, again, on this one, this one is a... I'm pulling some of Edgar's artwork. A very, a very <laughs> subtle uh, sweetness to it. Uh, very full of flavor. Um, and I have 1957 Chevy Bel Air. I think that is that color is the is the inspiration for the color. I'll tell you what. That. I had a friend of mine who had the 57 Bel Air yeah. when I was in high school, and that was the color. And yeah. now that you mentioned that, it it brought that back to me. In fact, it had no uh, heater in it, <laughs> and we had a ice storm in Tyler. Oh, and wow. him and I were co-workers. Well, I was, we were both in high school, and he took me home in that Bel Air. And I don't think any other vehicle would have made that trip. I mean, it was an ice storm. It was coming down bad. And we froze our asses off all the way to my house. <laughs> the, uh, Love and, you, Jim. And this one, the Epicure Maduro, Stogie Press, 94 out of 100. So all of these have been like 93 or above, right? Um that we've uh, that we've we've talked about. Uh, all right. So, what is next? I think the uh, limitada. Let's see. Yeah, let's do the limitada. The le. Show the le now. On the limitadas, they only make uh, for a thousand a year. They only make a thousand a year. Uh, it is a, a Nicaraguan Esteli wrapper, Connecticut broadleaf binder. Right now, the industry is going through a tough time with broadleaf tobacco. And the reason is uh, what we've been told by a lot of the cigar manufacturers there at the lounge is that the marijuana industry is buying up 
a lot of the broad leaf to use it uh, to wrap some of their their product in. Really? And because they're flush with a whole bunch of cash, they're willing to pay two and three times what it really costs to buy it, and they're buying it out from underneath the cigar manufacturer. So That's crazy. Yeah, so there you go. So if you have a, a cigar that is uh, made with a broadleaf uh, tobacco uh, and you're having a hard time finding it, that is why. You heard it here first. Um, now that has five... Damn hippies. <laughs> the LE, <laughs> the Limitada Limited Edition, has five different fillers that they put in there. Uh, and that's a, a trade secret. They don't tell you what five fillers or where it's all from. Um, and that one by Cigar Federation was rated a 94 out of 100. Now, in 2018, they released the Corona Gorda and the Toro Redline. 2016 was the Show and the PB5. And 2019 was the Short Salamone. Um, and I have a box of those Short Salamones in my uh, yeah. aging humidor. In fact, this one is... This one is the Limitada Short Salamone right here. Yes, it is. So, uh, and these are... But I have the old logo Oh, on you've those. got the old logo, yeah. Yeah. So the old Crux logo. So yeah. that's... Yeah, the, I'm not sure those are the 2019s. Those are the 2020s or 2021s. Yeah. Um, those are... It might... That would have been... That might have been one of the last ones that they also switched over to the branding. But uh, earthy, creamy, nutty, nutty flavor on those... Um, very complex and clean. Again, none of these cigars in the Crux line leaves a heavy uh, residue or flavor. You know, sometimes when you get down to smoking a cigar, uh, it kind of leaves a heaviness on your on your palate. Yeah. All of these cigars, very clean on the palate when you're done smoking, doesn't leave uh, any heaviness or a lot of that extra residue uh, on your palate. So very clean with those. All right. What else, what other uh, labels do you have there? What else I, are you able to pull up? I have up? the passport. Oh, you have the passport. All right. There's the passport logo. Yeah. Now, that is a and and that's a beautiful stick too. It is. Now, so a lot of so the passport, the sports, the uh, nymphas, nymphomaniacs, and the skeeters. Now they're out there. Uh, and I did hear yesterday that some of these that they had been producing early on and then kind of went away from might be resurrected here shortly. Or if if uh, the lounge orders some, Sam said he can get hold of some. So I know there are some people in the lounge that like the, the Passport, the Skeeter, the, the Nymphomaniac. So um, uh, I have smoked the passport uh, again it's a one hour vacation no visa required it's a medium to full strength ecuadorian habano wrapper nicaraguan binder and filler uh cocoa spice leather cherry and a little bit of saltiness so um yeah so that's the passport uh, it's one that i would love to smoke uh and have a, a shot at but uh i have not been able to smoke that one yet so there's the logo for the uh Nympha, let's see. Where's the here. Nympha? Let me. Let's oh, that's the Skeeter. That's the Skeeter. That's the Nympha. Nympha. That's the Nympha. The Nympha is over here. Sorry about the background, guys. I should have thrown a white uh, background on that uh, 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 logo there. That's a pretty pur dark purple. I like that. I'm just I'm all over the place now. All right. So the Nympha and the Nympha Dark, or the Nymphomaniac, uh, both uh, the Nympha Dark is medium. The Nympha, the Nympha is medium to full. Both of them have some uh, nut flavor to it. The uh, Nympha Dark is more walnut, roasted pecans with some dark chocolate and cherry. The Nympha is nuts, apricot, some cocoa cream, uh, and it says fresh brownie. Uh, the thing on both of these, and the Skeeter as well, is the binder is an Indonesian binder. Uh, and that's hard for them to get hold of. It's uh, a little bit harder tobacco. So that's also, I think, why they went away from it for a while. Uh, but now apparently they're able to get some of that back uh, or have... Just had a collection out there that they're well, willing to release. Well, you know, that may now. be the deal. They may they may uh, hoard what they can, and then once they get enough to 
produce it, they produce it, right. and then they sit on it until they've got another supply. Now, the, the, the Nympha was a uh, homage to Cuba, classic Cuban uh, Nympha Vitola, uh, and... Uh, That's a good-looking cigar, too. Yeah. It's a good it's a good looking cigar. So I can't wait for him to come out with that again. All right, what other? Did you have the Skeeter one too? I do. Hold on, let me. Uh... And of course, it looks just like the Skeeters. Looks just like what you would think it would look like. Yeah, it looks like a mosquito. Yep. Uh, licorice, cocoa, hay, a little bit of light black pepper, uh, some sweet spice and leather, uh, Nicaraguan Habano uh, wrapper, and again Indonesian binder and Nicaraguan Habano filler. And uh, it's a little 4x32 Purito, and uh, it's labeled as uh, just a little prick. So it's a little quick smoke, uh, but apparently from some of the reviews, if I remember reading uh, about it the first time we went around and did this, uh, the people that had smoked it really liked it. It was a little good, quick little smoke uh, and really enjoyed it. So um, I, I want to say I have not, I've had the Nymphomaniac. I have not had the Passport of the Skeeters. And those, so those are two that I have not smoked. So I can't speak directly to those, but ones I definitely would like to try. I'm trying to get my label off here without ripping it. I understand. Oh. All right. So that, that, is that all of them? That is all of them. cover all of them? That is all of them. And we're right there almost at our hour that we usually like to go. Um, so, yeah. So uh, there you go. I know we've done Crux before. We added a couple of little extra surprises in there. We got to talk about the new kind of sewer. The Halloween limited edition, and we got to actually show big screen of the of the logos because that's the one thing that kind of yeah we weren't able to show you uh, know, you know logos doing and... doing this only goes so far you know you can't see it very well and I am so glad that we have advanced to the point that we can actually show uh, you guys some really cool stuff. So, Sai uh, Sweeney, if you're still on, buddy. Uh, Send us a message, uh, your shipping information, and we'll send you a Tales from the Lounge shirt. I think uh, Rick uh, kind of nailed it. You know, Ireland, uh, he says the shirt should go to Ireland. And as long as it's a extra large or double extra large size, we can uh, accommodate that. That's so. right. I got, I got small all the way up to double X. I did not get any triple Xs, but, you know, uh, we'll... Uh, We'll make those available at oh, some look, point. Oh, look, still on. So. All right. Hit me up in Messenger. Send me your uh, shipping information. We'll send you a Tales from the Lounge t-shirt. And uh, I appreciate everybody who's coming. Now is the time for the deal. And we're going to change this up uh, soon. In fact, probably next week because of the new technology. When we do our shameless plugs, we'll be pulling up the shameless plugs on the screen with a link that you can click on them and see their websites and see what the guys do. And as you know, we don't get paid for anything here. We do this because we love cigars and we love you guys. Uh, that's uh, and, don't, yeah, and, we don't, and we'll eventually be making some money off of this. Don't get me wrong. Well, you know, I mean, uh, we don't even, you know, we do the research that you could spend two or three hours doing if you really wanted to. But no, we, I, we, 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 we spend enjoy more it. than two or three hours. I mean, between the two of us normally. Yeah. But, but it, yeah, and the, uh, the, um, but we just like promoting local companies that do great jobs and, and that we love. And we've talked about even after we do our shameless plugs, maybe turning our shameless plugs into a roll the credits. Uh, so yeah, you're going to see some pretty cool stuff. We're kind of trying to raise our game a little bit, uh, but we're still going to still, still be. Chris and Ron, and we will. Uh, we will not let here. fame change us. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we got some exciting new things uh, coming. So uh, you know, be looking for that. Um, all right. So shameless plugs. Uh, and Rick, that was a great suggestion that the shirt should go to Ireland. So Cy, again, extra large is what he said. Make sure you message us after this. Um, and uh, get us your shipping information. We'll get that sent out to you, man. Um, so let's start off with Cigars and Guns. Cigars and Guns, our buddy Adrian. And uh, he is on all platforms, including TikTok. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, that's crazy. But uh, hit them up. If you like guns, you like cigars, you need to hit up Adrian at Cigars and Guns. Yep. And uh, he also has a monthly T-shirt club. 
Uh, I could show you one of the t-shirts. I, I'll probably wear one next week. Okay. Um, and uh, let you do that. Uh, and then, uh, let's see. Larry wants us to talk about Hutchins Barbecue, Wolf Burger, Crush Taco, and, of course, Industrial Cigar Company. That's that's our home lounge that we go to. Um, Brandon with Go Local, who's also an owner there at Industrial. He's got his own marketing uh, and branding and company. Branding company. Uh, someone say thank you. Uh, Begley and Brandon's wife, Ale, kind of run that. Uh, so gift baskets, engravings, stuff like that is what they do. Uh, our buddy, Busy B. Uh, so if he you does need... it mainly local, uh, photography or DJing, but I know he has traveled for to DJ stuff for certain events He has traveled for, for photography stuff yeah. because his photography is phenomenal. Phenomenal. His, his photography and videography are phenomenal. Yeah, it, his photography has been featured uh, in several uh, national magazines. Exactly. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, uh, someone say whiskey. So if you're a whiskey uh, enthusiast, enthusiast, join or the, just a lush like yeah. we are, join the Someone Say Whiskey uh, Facebook page, uh, and a great group to just learn more about whiskey. Uh, if you're a coffee fan, Distretto Coffee. Distretto Coffee, I have it every morning. And they ship. I have several cups every morning. They will ship it to you. Uh, oh, don't forget about the Lynx Ladies, Size Matters, which is that's tomorrow right. night. Tomorrow night. They do a little show. Um, and that's, uh, you know, uh, Begley, uh, one of the owners of the Cigar Lounge and one of her Lynx Ladies. Just trying to introduce women to cigars and get them to com feel comfortable coming into a cigar lounge and talking about... Ladies' issues and cigars, and the love of cigars too. So yeah, I, I worry about the women's issues every once in a while. <laughs> Sometimes it gets a little fun, a little entertaining, but they do a good job. Yes, they um, do. Let's see who else. Uh, oh, if you're a wine enthusiast, our friend Maggie in Tennessee. Don't forget about uh, Mags. Uh, what is it? what's her uh, handle there? The uh, Burgundy Burgundy Geek Burgundy Geek or the Cellar Geek or the Cellar. Uh, Geek, yeah. She is actually a sommelier. And if you need recommendations for wine, she is the person to hit up. Yeah. Uh, in fact, she manages several million-dollar collection. wine collections for uh, for people. So she is a great person to talk to. And we're hoping to have her back on when she comes in town in December. At some absolutely, point. absolutely. Uh, Anyone else? Uh, Aaron Klaus Aaron from uh, Air Rescue. Uh, we're getting into the winter. Make sure your heater is working. It does air conditioning and heaters. Uh, great company. Uh, takes care of all your uh, air conditioning and heating needs. And will not rip you off and try to sell you a new oh, unit right. just because you want one. Because uh, he needs and, to. And he makes pretty good uh, old fashions and oh, uh, drinks. And so. He also makes uh, hella, hella good uh, Bloody Marys. Oh, yeah. Some Bloody Marys. Oh. Yes, yes. So, uh, who else? Um, oh, John. John, oh, my, my, but, oh, so a little update on my buddy, my buddy John and Palmetto State Armory out in uh, South Carolina. Actually, if you are on Adrian's Cigars and Guns things, you'll see that they have started to, uh, they've entered into a partnership with Palmetto State Armory, and uh, Adrian is helping uh, push out advertisements and specials that Palmetto State Armory is running. Awesome. So, yeah, I got those guys hooked up there. Um, and uh, but John uh, hurt his neck and has been flat on his back for like eight days and has not been able to move. Did uh, he piss off his wife again? Yeah, I I, I, I talked to her because uh, <laughs> apparently he's in a lot of pain and they're going through some issues with the doctor and anything. Anyway, so but yeah, so uh, thoughts and prayers out to you, John. Hope you get to back on your feet uh, and feeling better. So their their how their Halloween their Thanksgiving was not all that great. Um, <sighs> But hopefully he's back on his feet uh, soon. Um, and then uh, Ugly Sweater, uh, just an announcement. If you have not purchased your tickets for the Ugly Sweater event at ICC this Friday night, I think tonight's the last night you can buy your ticket. Or might have been last night. I think there's a couple of tickets left, though. There's not many. But Ugly Sweater uh, event um, and uh, Busy, Busy will not be DJing. Busy will not be there. I'll have a guest DJ and uh, Amy Porter from Lone Elm. Lone Elm will be there. And we forgot about Lone Elm. Lone Elm. Oh, and then if we're going to talk about chocolates. Uh, and Yelly Belly Chocolates. Yelly Belly Chocolates as well. Uh, so, yeah, just, man, we just have to start writing our list down of all the different we're, uh, places, that's, so. we're going to put it in here and let yeah. it run, and we're going to have some fun. All right, guys. Uh, next week, actually, 
Amy will be here from Lone Elm. Amy from Lone Elm will be here. We're going to talk whiskey. So, Cy, you definitely want to be here for that. Yep. And uh, Saturday at the shop. Yeah, so there's a couple other things that, that uh, Ron helps run all of the cameras at Saturday at the shop. And sometimes you'll see me in the background because I run the register. So, Dave and uh, Brandon can actually uh, do Saturday at the I, shop. You know, I'm amazed that they conned you into that. So, deal. if you guys like this show and can put up with us for 45 minutes, you definitely can hang with uh, Brandon, Brandon and, and Dave. Dave on Saturday mornings at 10 a.m. Central Time. Cy, that's, that's for you. And I think I saw someone else from somewhere. But that's about 10 a.m. Central Time. Saturday, every Saturday morning, they do a, uh, a little podcast on Facebook. Uh, and that's on uh, Industrial Cigar Company's uh, page. So look for that. That's always a lot of fun. Um, and then they do a Cigar Newbies on Tuesday night. That's well. and that's another group you need to join. If you're yeah. not, and whether you're an expert on cigars or not, check out the Facebook page, uh, Cigar Newbies. Uh, a lot of people get on there and talk about their experiences and ask questions. And you can, if you're an experienced cigar smoker, jump on there and help the newbies out. And they are a very close knit community. Uh, and remember, if you're going to post a cigar selfie, don't just post the selfie. Post what it is and kind of tell a little bit about what you're experiencing yeah. so that everybody can kind of uh, learn from what you're, what you're doing. Yeah. Um, and uh, last night they actually had uh, Ken Hamlin, uh, owner of The Arrival Cigar, on the show last An night. An ex-cowboy and Seattle Seahawk. Ex-cowboy and Seattle Seahawk. And uh, if you see his box and how his box is made and the coloring of his cigar bands, it would make a lot of sense. It has the cowboy and Seahawk kind of uh, themes to it. Uh, good cigar, really good cigar. And uh, I didn't get to see all the show, but I got to see some of it. So, yeah, Cigar Newbies is just kind of cigar talk, and they talk a little bit about everything, and sometimes they have special guests. So that's Tuesday nights. Usually between 7 and 8, sometimes Central Time again. Um, we're here every Wednesday night um, uh, at 7 o'clock Central, 7 o'clock, 7.05, somewhere around there. Um, yeah, so there you go. So uh, do you well, guys have a great week? And thanks, everybody, for showing up. We really appreciate it. And be sure, sure to like and to uh, share this out to your friends. And we will see you next week. Oh, Cy said he sent his uh, address on uh, Facebook Messenger. Great, Cy. We'll try and get the, that uh, shirt out to you here. Uh, we'll have it out in the next day or two. And, and uh, have a nice little Christmas present there for you. Absolutely. Might uh, sneak a cigar to in for him. Uh, we can do that. Yeah. All right. You guys have a good night. Thanks for joining us. Excellent. Uh,